I want to make a few more remarks about the life world, which Hustle discusses in the Crisis of the European Sciences. But he talks about Galilean physics, and he talks about mathematics within the life world. He talks about geometry, and he you know, talks about a few things here. But I want to think about, you know, just how we can, you know, go back to it. The life world consists of, as Alfred Schutz says a lot, um, it's con it's constructed of many social constructions, but what Husserl says is that it's also it's also a huge amount of, of mathematics because he talks about how Galileo says that we can mathematize nature. This is definitely true. Now, I guess I want to think about this sort of mathematiz mathematization of nature, and um, this is because of the life world, and I guess we can, you know, look at everything and we can sort of create a mathematical function about it, or so, you know, sort of figure out, you know, how everything works through mathematics. We can do all of that. We can figure everything out through math. We can, you know, sort of map things out, and then I guess through sciences and philosophy, if we ever have problems, we can inquire, you know, go back to the, to the, to the pre-given life, life world. Because Asriel says in this book about uh, the, the crisis of the European sciences that the life world is pre-given. This includes space. This includes time. This includes, you know, things a priori, as Kant would say. And he also includes... It also includes... Um, the place where in which we differentiate things, like this is the place where I can differentiate a supposedly inanimate object with a person like myself. And I guess what I want to think about is um, one can nature be really mathematized, and I guess furthermore, our math our mathematical objects, you know. How, you know, through the phenomenological perspective, how are mathematical objects, you know, in nature, or are they in nature, or do they come from us? Because basically when we, when we, when we come into the world, we come in here, come into this world as dwelling here, as Werner Marx would say. We're dwelling here. This is where we, you know, figure everything out. And I guess, you know, we can mathematize everything. And I guess this sort of creates a subjectivity, and I guess, you know, through science and everything, we can sort of inquire back to this pre-given life world, or the home world, which we all uh, know, know, and know and understand, which sort of brings us to this objectivity, not in the physical sense, but it sort of brings it to, brings it to a sort of different ontical sense, where um, we're looking at this... You know, as it is, um, as it is the way we see it, and if we can, you know, have this life world that we all agree upon, and the Australian inner subjectivity, then we have a sense of optical ob objectivity, a uh, noetico nomadic objectivity, as it is often said. But I guess what I want to think about here is because of this. How are mathematical objects, you know, there? How what is what does phenomenology look upon mathematics? Now, there's a few diff there's a few different, you know, ways of looking at mathematics. Now, this is you know the whole Platonic heaven sort of thing, where mathematical objects are out there, independent of us, where they do all these workings in the world that you know we don't know a whole lot about, and you know, but we still use them, but they're sort of like the properties in the universes in the, in the Platonic Heavens, which, and there's also the fact that, there's also the thought that mathematical objects are constructions of our mind, which we, which is where we get, you know, which comes from idealism and inner which comes from subjective idealism as well as intersubjective idealism, which, you know, leads to mathematical the theories like intuitionism. And then also we have um, linguistic nominalism, which says that, you know, mathematical objects are, are 
bits of language. And then also we have the nihilism, which rejects, uh, or the nihilistic nominalism, which rejects mathematical objects as properties altogether, you know, because they also reject properties. Nominalism is the metaphysical rejection of properties. Now, I guess I want to think about this in the phenomenological sense. Now, to re to restate phenomenology with this li with this life world concern, to restate phenomenology with this life world concern, we look at things as we all see it without questioning the physical, you know, noumenal sense that's there. Because that's what the that's what a lot of people did before Kant came with his uh, Copernican Turing, where what he did was he sort of, you know, where there he said there's phenomena, and then there's noumena. Noumena is knowable. Forget about it. Figure out phenomena. Which led to a lot of fun, which led to the phenomenology that came through Searle and Heidegger and Merleau-Ponty and all that stuff. But I guess what I want to think about through this phenomenological perspective, perspective of looking through things as they are, how are, you know, can we, what what are mathematical constructions? Are they with the subjective idealist perspective, or are they, you know, out there because of inner subjective idealism, which brings us to object, to objectivity? Because I guess I'm thinking I'm not. I don't want to think about inner subjective idealism because I don't like idealism in this state. Because I'm thinking more about phenomenology, inner subjective phenomenology. How would that look at? the mathematical objects which are supposedly in nature and how would mathematical or I mean how would uh, intersubjective phenomenology think you know how is it supposed to think about you know the mathematization of nature now can we mathematize nature now I'm reading a book called mathematizing nature which you know talks about how we can basically I can measure anything into supposed numbers, you know, measurements. I can figure out the function of a curve. I can I can figure out how long it's going to take for the rest of the snowball to melt, as you know this author that I'm thinking about says. I can sort of interpret time and space through geometry, algebra, calculus, and all that stuff. I can sort of interpret it all through mathematics. I can, ma I can mathematize nature. I can figure out the speed of things through physics and all that stuff. I can, you know, use physics and geometry and calculus to mathematize nature. So basically all the stuff that, you know, we're seeing can be mathematized into some, you know, using some mathematical, ma mathematical constructions. Now, I guess this is part of the reason why there's this phenomenologically, phenomenologically objective life world. That's part of the reason why it is, because we have space and time, and we understand causality, and therefore we can mathematize nature using physics and algebra and calculus and all that stuff. And I guess if we didn't have that, you know, the idea of the life world would be sort of not too valid. Because in the beginning of the crisis of, of European sciences, uh, Husserl talks about, you know, Galileo's mathematization of nature. He talks about, you know, the nature of the world is a mathematical universe. And I would have to, I would have to agree. Because if we, I think, I, I think, you know, regardless of, you know, the idealist skepticism of, you know, empirically, or about, about noumena, we can mathematize things. It doesn't matter what it is. We can we can mathematize it. Whether it's you know the intuitionist, the formalist, the logicists, the logicists uh, way of looking at math mathematical constructions or objects, I can still mathematize nature in many different ways. I, you know, I mean, I can I can mathematize nature. You know, I can mathematize you know what the what this is measured as. I can I can mathematize you know what certain curve, what the function of certain curves are, I can, you know, figure out statistics, I can figure out all these numbers about everything. And mathematicians and just regular people will agree with me when I get all these numbers about how the world is. You know, there's things like, which, you know, talks about, you know, there's things like the 
number five, which is phi, which is like you know two point four one or something. is a book, but which, which talk, talks about how that's a, a mathematical number of nature. But I guess I want to think about you know I, th I really think that we can mathematician nature, which all of us are going to agree about, and you know which is why we have this objectivity phenomenological objectivity of that which we all can agree upon and that whenever we get lost in our investigation we can inquire back from this and I guess he talks about you know the way into in way into phenomenological transcendental philosophy by inquiring back from the, from the pre-given life world in this part 3 in the, or in the a part 3 a he talks about how you know that he talks about the real crisis of the European sciences and how we should correct it but and I think, you know, I think that, you know, I just think that, you know, whatever, whatever we're doing, we can inquire back in this life world as it is forgiven. Which, you know, and I think, I guess I'm thinking about phenomenology as a foundational principle is because, this can solve a lot of things. It's, you know, making things way less complicated than it has been in philosophy and science and all, that, and all that stuff. So I guess what I'm thinking here is that we have objectivity in our hands, phenomenological objectivity, yet we let it slip through our hands with science and philosophy as we, you know, do in metaphysics and science and all that stuff. We let this objectivity that we have slip through our hands. Because we forget about this, you know, life world, this inner subjectivity, whether we have this phenomenology, this phenomenological inner subjectivity, and we forget that we can just inquire back from this pre-given life world that we have, which is there for us all the time. But I don't know. What, what, do, what do you guys think? And I guess you know, answering the whole mathematical thing, math, or the question about ma mathematical objects. Um, I would reject the Platonism, I would reject the nihilism, and the nominalism, and I guess I might take a little bit of the linguistic nominalism, because I think mathematical constructions and objects are somewhat language, but I, looking at this from the, from the phenomenological perspective, um, I think with this sub with this objectivity with the life world, there are mathematical objects and constructions out there, and there. But 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 I'm not going to Platonism and stuff like that. I'm saying that because we are here and we are dwelling, as Marx Werner Marx would say, we're dwelling in this life world, and to you know, figure out nature and all this stuff into get further in science and philosophy, we mathematize nature. So to answer this whole question, you know, that, that philosophy of mathematics has about mathematical objects is that there are mathematical objects and, and constructions there, but if we weren't here, neither would they. If we were not here, they wouldn't be here either. Um, which is why I think Platonism is faulty. And I don't think that there. I, all, I don't think that there's universals which are in the Platonic heavens or anything like that. But, and I guess I'm. You know, if we can mathematize nature, it would. You know, it would never be mathematized if we weren't here. So, you know, a way mathematical mathematical objects are objective, but they're only objective because we are intersubjective, and that creates objectivity for us. Because the world is there for us, the world is you know sort of there you know for us, because we exist. Because even if, if, if we didn't we didn't if we didn't exist, the world might as well might as well not, not exist either. So, because of this in, inter intersubjectivity of us and there, thus the objectivity of the world for us, mathematical objects do do exist, but not in the in the in the Platonist sense. So I guess, what do you think? What 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 are your thoughts on this whole? Phenomenology of mathematics, if you want to call it that, you know. But thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in further videos, I'm gonna talk about uh, the crisis of the of the European sciences, and also the interest, interest subjectivity, and as well as you know more of Heidegger and all that stuff.
Thank you.